Apple is one truly great company. They could have charged us more when they started delivering lossless and high-res lossless music, but they didn't. They gave it out for free to any Apple Music subscriber. But maybe because they already knew that it wasn't going to make much of a material difference, and so in their good conscience, they can't charge for it. They can't bear to charge us more for it. Is there a difference? Let's find out today. So as usual in all my videos, I try to give you the summary upfront. And my summary conclusion is that high res lossless, well, is good. The music sounds great, but is it better? I don't think it's better. Before we go on, I like to clarify what high res means. CD is encoded at 16 bit depth and 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate. So anything that's above that is technically classified as high res. But a lot of people will say that high res must be 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. So for all intents and purposes, whatever the classification is, as long as it is a higher bit rate and a higher sampling rate than CD, it should be considered high res. Now, let's talk about what Apple classifies as high resolution. So Apple's lossless is encoded at 24 bits, 48 kilohertz. Technically, it's already higher than CD. So the higher the bit depth you have, the higher the dynamic range you can encode within your music and the sampling rate just determines the frequency that you can reach up to. So if you have, for example, 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate, it means that your frequency range, you can probably encode up to 22 kilohertz thereabouts, right? And the human ear is capable of discerning up to 20 kilohertz. Some people, some audiophiles will tell you that, oh, they can tell the difference above 20,000 kilo, 20, hertz, but I doubt that. I mean, I've been trained quite well to listen to all these small nuances in the frequency response, but um, to, to say that I can discern the difference between 20 kilohertz and 25 kilohertz, I, I doubt that myself. So let's get this out of the way. For Apple Music, if you turn on the option to listen, to stream, to download, to play in high resolution lossless, for the tracks that support it, you will see this particular sign here. It says high res lossless. So high res lossless, um, for some tracks, it will be 24 bits, 96 kilohertz sampling. For some tracks, it will be 24 bits, 192 kilohertz sampling. Now, 192 kilohertz sampling means that it will be able to encode up to 96 kilohertz of uh, frequency, which I really doubt even your dog probably can't even hear that. Now, the problem with this is that Apple hardware, right? The phones, the iPad, the Macs, the Apple TV, the MacBooks, the iMac, whatever Apple product, the hardware that you have today, they can't actually support high-res decoding at all. So Apple says that if you want to hear high-res lossless, not the regular lossless, high-res lossless, you actually need an external DAC. Now, as you have seen earlier, when I'm showing you this, right? This is just the phone itself. There's nothing attached to it, but you'll still see high-res lossless. It simply means that it is pulling the high-res lossless version of the file. It says high-res lossless means this is what you are streaming over. It does not mean that you are hearing high-res lossless. Now, that said, how do you get high-res lossless out of the Apple Music ecosystem to pipe it into your ears? So this is what I did. Let me switch the view. Okay, so what I have here, this is the iPhone itself. And I have this dongle here. And this dongle is a lightning to USB connector. It's a, well, basically you plug it in one end to this and it opens up a USB A port. Now this USB A port is then connected via this USB A to USB C cable, right? So you plug it in here into a deck. So this is an external deck. This is a uh, budget deck. It actually has an M that is built in as well. It serves as a DAC. It will decode up to 192 kilohertz sampling rate at 24 bit depth. Okay. So what you do is you plug this in. Okay. And it starts recognizing that, okay, it now is acting as a USB deck. All right. So if you start playing here, it should transfer the bits here to be decoded by the deck here. And this will then power a pair of external headphones, which I have the DT990 Pro from Bayer Dynamics here. 
So this is the whole setup, okay? Just let you have a closer look. You have the phone itself, the dongle, the USB cable, and then the decoder itself, and a wired headphone. So for most of you, this is how you're gonna be uh, setting up to get your high-res lossless audio. Okay, so just to show you what it means, I have not started playing on this. So if you look here, it says here, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit depth. So this is the regular one. If I click play here, okay, you can take a look here. It starts to decode at 192 kilohertz at 24 bits. So this is the highest resolution that Apple Music is being encoded at. And by right, when you start listening to this, it's going to be, well, shockingly high res. And if you were to ask me after I started listening to it, it is very clean. It is, the, the music is great, okay? But after the initial hubris, I was having a lot of difficulties trying to hear the difference. Maybe my hearing is not as good as before. So let's try to remove my ears from the equation. So as usual, I try to be quite scientific in my approach and I started using the binaural microphones. So I stuffed the binaural microphones, one in each ear, and I put the headphones over and I started recording everything. So I recorded three versions. One is the regular one that you'll be listening to. The second will be the lossless, but not the high-res version. And the third will be the high-res lossless version of this particular song, Hotel California by the Eagles. And what I did was I put the recording through Audacity. Audacity will analyze the sound and try to tell me at every single frequency throughout the whole song, uh, which are the notes, you know, uh, and how strong are they playing. So this is not the regular frequency response chart that I do. So it looks a little bit different if I were to put it out on the screen here. Now this gray chart here is the one that is representing the regular version of the song, right? So it is not lossless and it's not high res. This chart here, the blue one, is actually the lossless version. Not the high res one, just the lossless version. And the purple chart is the high res lossless. Now, I'm gonna cycle through them again. It's gonna look very, very similar, right? You, you'll be hard pressed to tell the difference. L let me tell you, the difference is minute. So what I did was I overlaid the chart. And if you look very, very closely to the chart, you'll see that there'll be some purple parts peeking out. There'll be some blue parts peeking out. Most of the chart actually falls in line with the gray chart, which is the regular non-lossless, non-high-res version. In theory, when you look at these charts here, you won't be able to tell anything more than a 1% difference. And that tells me that what I was hearing is correct. So whether you're surprised or not, there's actually very little difference in the three different formats that we are talking about. Are they discernible? To most people, I would say 99% of the people out there, you probably can't tell the difference. I'll be very happy to keep using this Sony WH-1000XM4, which is Bluetooth wireless, but I'm happy enough with this, right? And it is convenient. And basically, this is all you need. You don't need anything else. You don't need the mess of cables. You don't need the dongle. You don't need the deck. You don't need to charge the deck. You don't have to worry about the battery level. And you don't have to be tethered with a wire. In fact, three wires, as I can see on the table in front of me right now. So why is the industry pushing high res? To be honest, I think it's to make more money. If you think about it, since the cassette, since the cassette was superseded by the CD, the CD took off tremendously. But after the CD, they tried a couple of things. They tried DVD-A, DVD audios. They tried SACD, and they tried also Blu-ray audio. And CD was actually good enough already. For anyone else who says that SACD is better, Blu-ray audio is better, DVD-A is better, you, you could really be uh, cheating yourself, right? The difference is so marginal. And most of the time, most people aren't going to be able to tell the difference. So those formats didn't take off. And today, we are probably going to be looking at the same thing. A small percentage of the population is going to be able to tell the difference. But that small percentage, it doesn't drive the industry. High-res audio is great, but it's never going to be mainstream. So for the most of us out there, we aren't going to be able to tell the difference between high-res. So why pay for it? Why go through the whole inconvenience of listening to high-res? I wouldn't, and I don't think I will. I've done this experiment. I've shared this with you already. And I think 
my job is done. I will be going back to my wireless connection. So what does that all mean to us? I would say, leave high res to the audiophile who will chase it. You can't end the road for these audiophiles. They can tell the difference and they appreciate the difference. They are willing to accept the compromises, the inconvenience to enjoy just that little bit more. So leave it to them. Otherwise, the $30,000 equipment is going to go to waste. Let them enjoy the sound, we shall enjoy the music. Lossless is great. High-res lossless, unnecessary. I'll see you in my next video.